in the ADSL market. So we don't start from scratch. We start from a favorable situation uh, as far as competition is, uh, is concerned. So what we aim to do as a regulator is to encourage investment in the fiber, in the local loop, uh, for all operators, not only the historical operators, but we have good reason to think that the uh, challengers of France Telecom in ADSL will become active challengers in fiber. So we think that several rollouts, several parallel rollouts of local loops in fiber are possible in France. Down to a sharing point. Of course, the very last terminal part of the network in dense area, that means within the building, is a natural monopoly, and there that would be mostly inefficient that several operators should invest. So for that terminal part, we think of co-investment. The first mover uh, installs the network for others, and others co-finance, or uh, if they don't co-finance, uh, they will have access later, but maybe paying a risk premium or something like that. So there is an incentive to co-invest at the start. So we are now in RCEP setting the rules for the first phase. The first phase is the cabling, fiber cabling of the most dense areas in France, big cities. And we are already thinking, and it's more than thinking, the whole uh, carrying out experimentations, experimentations with the actors of what should be the right rules for less dense areas and rural areas. And we might think that the same will happen, will occur for fiber than occurred for ADSL in France, that uh, up to some point, uh, local territories will have to imply and to uh, get involved in the uh, rollout of, uh, of fiber networks. But at least for the more dense areas, we strongly rely upon private initiative. So the regulation is both symmetric for sharing the terminal part and asymmetric, the only asymmetric part of the regulation is enforcing France Telecom to give access to its ducts, which is the only essential facility left in the fiber era. Just half a word about spectrum uh, management. Uh, as you know, a mobile broadband needs frequencies, high frequencies for capacity uh, enhancing in dense areas and low frequencies for coverage of less dense areas and for indoor penetration. And this has been achieved for 2G, and now 97% of the French territory is, of the French population is covered by 2G. Uh, 3G is um, moving fast. Uh, high frequencies are in the band of uh, 2.1 giga. And uh, uh, refarming of uh, the 900 megahertz uh, band uh, is uh, helping. And as you know, and I will be happy to answer questions uh, after the, the talk. We are on the, um, we are about to, to deliver a fourth license uh, to a new entrant. We, we have uh, three slots of five uh, uh, megahertz, which are still not awarded in the 2.1 uh, giga, and we reserve one lot of five to a new entrant, and the two others will be auctioned to all operators. The, the new entrant and the uh, incumbent. And uh, as you know, we already think of 4G. We are going to uh, auction or uh, opening a beauty contest. It's not yet decided for the 2.6 giga and the 800 megahertz inherited from the digital dividend. Uh, we are starting the process of awarding this year and. Uh, um, the license should be uh, delivered uh, by the end of uh, next year. Last but not least, a word about the, how to restitute uh, the value of content to uh, artistic creation without impeding the consumer of enjoying uh, a large consumption of content. Uh, this is a topic which has been uh, addressed already in this morning, but I think that's a very important one. And that's maybe uh, a domain where internet uh, is really revolutionary. In the pre-digital era, the main equation of value was, uh, as uh, I think that uh, Nicholas made, delivered you uh, 
um, a lecture of economics this morning and told you to be confident that the efficiency was price equals marginal cost equals marginal utility. So that was in the pre-digital era. Efficiency was when the cost of the last unit was equal to the utility of the last unit equal to price. But now, cost as utility tend to be more and more non-dependent on volumes. They tend to be fixed. The cost of a network is a fixed cost. The cost of creation of content is a fixed cost. The utility of having access to a network is fixed. It doesn't depend on the quantity. The, the, the utility of having access, as very well said uh, this morning, uh, Nicolas Negroponte, all Nicolas is in there, <laughs> uh, is uh, the utility of having access, not the utility of 10 million bytes or 100 million bytes. So in a world where all is fixed with respect to quantities, the main equation of value is no longer price equal marginal utility equals mar mar marginal cost. It's utility of access equals cost of access equals price of access. So in that economy, value is collected at the access level. Value is transferred from usage to access. You can, consumers are still willing to pay, but they are willing to pay, pay for access, no more for a volume of usage. So if you have to collect value to retribute, to remunerate artistic creation, you have to do it by taxing access, not taxing usage. And you say that just the contrary of Hadopi, <laughs> who tries to maintain the old pre-digital world by keeping a, a copyright completely aligned on taxation of usage. So as you understood, I'm not in favor of Hadopi. I was fighting for uh, for uh, global license. So my idea, and this is not mine, that's the sense of history, is that Internet is as a grotto of Ali Alibaba's grotto, where it's fair to make people pay when they enter the grotto, but that would be no sense to make them pay according to usage when they get out from the grotto, because the one who downloaded uh, millions of diamonds, digital diamonds, generates exactly the same cost as the one who just picked up nothing or just one diamond. So we are really in an economic change that should be reflected by public uh, policies. And Adopi can only be understood as a transitory measure that uh, helps industry to adapt, but when, adapt that, when uh, adaptation will have taken place, it's clear that value will have to be collected otherwise. So my concluding remarks is that, uh, of course, convergence is a deal, a big deal for regulation. Regulation will have to be more and more transversal. Fixed mobile and broadband market cannot be any longer separated. It has to be adaptive, of course, evolutive over time and also context specific. It's not the same in Greece and in France, for instance. It depends on national characteristics of the market. And last, uh, all kind of policy, sectorial policy, competition policy, public policy, should induce both structural design and uh, mechanism that will lead both industries of the content and of electronic communications, first, to make effective the additional value, the incremental value of convergence, second, to come to a fair sharing of that value between them and between them and two other partners, which are the uh, creators, who should get equitable return, but in a new way, as I just mentioned, and of course, consumer, which uh, should not be cut from the internet and from the value of convergence. Thank you very much.